What do you want to start with, kids? Which one do you want to start with? Um, Can you speak with her? Yes, just. 29. Yes. 29. 29. Okay, 29 says. Oh, that's a good one. So a lot of people doing this right. So you're supposed to graph f plus g. So what's the easy way to go about doing that? What's the easiest way to go about doing it? You're supposed to graph f plus g. How do you go about doing that? Add the space under f to g. That's a really good way. To, that's a great way to go about doing it because are you changing the x values? Mm -hmm. No, the x values stay the same. So here's f, here's g, and then we have f plus g. So what are our x values? Let's go with zero. Uh, let's go with zero, <laughs> three, and six. Let's just do three points. Uh, and then f. What is f going to be? Two. 1 and 0. What's G? 2. Like maybe 2 point something, right? 2.8, sure. And what's 0? Zero? 0. Now you add them together, you get 4. 3 point what? And 0. So you know what point is it going to start at? You know it's starting at 4. And you know it's ending at zero. Uh, and what happens to this graph at, at three? What is it? 3.8? So it actually goes down a little bit, right? So what does this curve actually look like? Oh, I missed. It goes up more? At the beginning, it just goes up just a little bit over four. Okay, so you want to plug in some more points? So let's plug in, let's do another one there. So let's plug in, how about 1? We can estimate this one. X is 1, what's F? 1.6. And what's G? 2.7. So when you add them together, what do you get? 4. Point what? 4.3. So it actually goes up a little bit, like that. Still missed. I gotta really get. I gotta start hitting these points, huh? And killing the curve, apparently. Cool. Good job. You're adding less and less to the height of G, right? You're adding less and less to the height of G because what's what's F doing? Decreasing. Yeah. Good. What's another one you want to do? You see, see, let's use hands today. Bissell. Thirty-five. 35, let's chat about 35. So 35 says, thirty-five. Nice, I like that one. We can deal with that. So you're supposed to do, what does the open dot mean? Uh, combination. Nope. Composition. Composition. Function composition. Yes, yeah, not composting. They stay around. They don't they don't disintegrate. Okay. So and you're supposed to find the what's the key here? Domain. So what might be a good thing to just do first? Yeah, so F is that what's the domain of sine gonna be? All real numbers. And what's the domain of G? Can you be equal to zero? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So what's F O G? What does that mean? What are you plugging into what? G into F, exactly. So that's going to be um, sine of G of X, but what's G of X? One minus, One minus the square root of X. Excellent. So now you need to figure out what the domain is. What's the domain of this function going to be? Yeah, x must be greater than or equal to zero. Absolutely. You you can't if you have to be able to plug it into this first part. So you have to be able to plug it into the square root. So x needs to be greater than or equal to zero. Are there any limits to what you can plug inside the sine function? No. There's no limits to what you can plug inside the sine function.
Okay, that's the first one. Let's do G of F. What do you plug into what here? F into G. So we have 1 minus the square root of? Yep. Now this is fun. This is fun. You'll like this. Um, now, in order to find the domain of this function, what do we have to make sure is the case? Sine x has to be greater or equal to zero. Sine x has to be greater than or equal to zero, right? Right? Well, it's not the problem. It just makes it a little more complicated. Let's let's specifically look at zero. Let's look at this part of the domain. It's going to repeat, right? It's going to repeat every two pi. Let's just look between 0 and 2 pi. What does the graph of sine look like? It's a wave. Yep. Oscillating wave, exactly. Does it go through the origin? Yep. Does it go up from the origin or down? Up. So you have something that looks like this, right? And let's just look at 0 to 2 pi. So here's 0, and here is? Is that correct? Is that 2 pi? In 2 pi, the sine actually be 0, right? Yeah. Yep, 2 pi, that's why it's at 0. There's, if there's 2... 2 pi is up to 0. So do I have to go further? No. Or shorter? Sure. So is it here? Yeah. Yes. Ah, you sure? Yeah. Positive? Yeah. That's 2 pi? Yeah. That's correct? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, so where is pi where is sine positive? Sine zero to pi. So sine is going to be positive from zero to x such that can it be zero? No. Sure, why not? You can take the square root of zero. Absolutely. So that's where it's positive just between zero and 0 and 2 pi. Now here's the thing, does that represent all of the places where this is positive? No. No, because there's also here, there's also here. How often does that repeat? How often does it repeat? It, it, that's how many times it repeats. Every pi. Every pi units it repeats, right? What's the gap between those humps? Pi. Does anybody, has anybody dealt with something like this before? Maybe in math league, maybe? Two, right? It could be two. So if you plug two, k is two, what would your what would your what would that part of this domain be? It would be two pi be between two pi and three pi. And we have to make sure that this works here. Is it between every possible one? Because between pi and two pi, is it is it greater than zero? No. So what's our what are our starting values here? Our starting values are zero. Nope, zero and what else? 2, and what's our next starting value going to be? The next one would be 4 pi, and the next one after that would be, because what's the starting value here? Negative 2 pi, right? So how do you guarantee, because, so for example, if I just left it like this, k is an integer like that, and k will be, k will stay an integer. This is kind of a little beyond your pay grade right here. k will stay an integer, but could k, if by this definition, could k equal 3? Sure. And does that work inside our domain? No, it doesn't. We need to guarantee k. We need to guarantee we have an even number, right? How do you guarantee you have an even number? If if you have if I pick any integer, what's one simple thing you can do to that integer to guarantee you have an even number? You multiply it by two. Can't just square. Three squared is nine. It's not even. But if you multiply by two, what do you always get? An even number. So you actually turn this into this is close. Close. You turn it into from 2k pi less than or equal to. Now, what goes in front of the pi? What goes in front of the pi here? 2k plus one. 2k plus one, exactly. Yeah. This is way beyond your pay grade. This would be a bonus question. Um, you'll definitely have to do things like this in calculus, but that represents all of the even to odd gaps. Because what is this number? This number is always what? It's always even, right? And this number is always one greater than that number. Wait. Yes. I think it's about two k plus one. It has to be one greater than this. It has to be one greater because you're going from. Yeah, but if you do. For example, okay, I could be wrong. If, um, 
K was what? K is 1. No, that works, right? 2 to 3, right? Does that work? Yeah, it does. So, so this how are you going to get the, the 1 pi, pi to, like, how do you get 2k equals 1? Because you have, you said 0. That's the first one, 0 to 1. Plug in 0 for k. That's the first one, yep. Okay, other questions from the homework, other questions from the homework. True. Let's start all the way from the right. You're going to take H and substitute it into G. Take what you get and put it into F. So you write this out if you're confused. This is F of G of H. That's going to be F of G of H, right? But what's G of H? Like this. You're plugging H into G and you're taking what you get and you plug it into F. So here's F f of, so let's do it one at a time here. Let's do g of h. What's g of h of x? Yep. Let's do, hold on. So it's going to be h of x squared plus 2. But what is h of x? So it's x plus 3 squared plus 2. Now what do we do with that? Plug it into f. So it's going to be f of g of x, h of x, sorry, it's going to be the square root of g of h of x minus what? But we know what g of h of x is. What is it? x plus 3 squared minus what? Plus. Can we simplify that a little bit? It's the square root of what? x plus 3 squared plus 1. Do you need to multiply this out? The only potential reason that I can think of to multiply that out would be if you think you can simplify it further based on that multiplication. If you think you can simplify it further if you multiply it out. Sometimes when you multiply it out and add that 1, it'll turn into something nice. I'm not so sure. You could try, but it doesn't really matter. Does that answer your question, everybody? Yep. So here's the thing. Here are three functions, right? Here's the bonus question for you. How many different ways could I compose them with three functions being composed together? Because we just did f of g of h. What's another one you could do? You could do g of f of h. What else could you do? h of f of g, h of g of f, right? So how many different orders are there? 27. If you count composing it, could you do f of f of f? You could. No, you're right. But 27 only happens if you do f of f of f, g of g of g of g of g, h of h of, if you can do multiple, if you, if you can use the function multiple times. Okay. If you can use the function multiple times, there are 27. If you can't use the function multiple times, how many are there? Sorry. How many are there? How many are there if you can't use the function more than once? Three. Six. Think about it this way. If you're, if you're doing three of these functions together, three of these functions together. How many choices do you have for the first one? Okay, if you've used one of them, how many do you have left? If you've used two of them, how many do you have left? Three times two times one. There's six of them. But if you can use the function multiple times, how many are there? 27. Three times three times three. Ah, you got it. You got it. Let's do one more of them. Let's do, uh, how about you do, how about you do, h of f of g and g of g of g. How about you do those two right there? So you like these two? They work out okay? Mm -hmm. Now looking at these three functions, there's 27 possible three function comp compositions. Which one do you think is going to look the worst? I think g of g of g of g of g is pretty bad. What else is going to look weird? How about f of f of f, right? So if you do f of f of f, yeah, it's going to be three roots, right? Are you allowed to do that? No. So you have f of, what is f? The square root of x minus 1, right? So it's going to be the square root of f of x minus 1. So that's going to be f of x minus 1 minus 1. 
So what's it going to be? You have to be really careful here, though, right? It's the square root of that minus 1, right? So it's going to be the square root of minus 1, right? <laughs> it is pretty weird. Are they, is it still a valid function? Do you understand each of the operations that's up there? Sure, it just looks weird, huh? Ah, carefully. I'm not going to have you do the domain of that. <laughs> just very carefully. Okay, so... Any last question? Or alphabet. Which one do you want? You have to choose. Uh, alphabet. F of F? Okay, so F of F of X. It's going to be F of X plus 1 over F of X. So what do you plug in for F of X? Oh, you already know. It's right there. So what's it going to be? X plus 1 over X. That's F of X plus 1 over. So at that point, you could say you're done. You can also find the domain. Well, first of all, you know that x can't be what? Definitely can't be 0, right? But then you also know that this can't be 0, correct? So therefore, x plus 1 over x, when does that equal 0? Well, that's when 1 over x is equal to? So that's when 1 is equal to? Negative x squared, so that's when x is equal to? What? When is 1 equal to negative x squared? Wow. Never. <laughs> x squared is always what? Positive. positive times a negative is always. So x plus 1 over x never equals 0. So what's the domain going to be? x such that x what? Yep. The only other thing I might ask you to do is if I gave you this right here, I might ask you to do what with it? What, what might I ask you to do? What might I ask you to do? Nope. Simplify, yeah. So please, take a minute, simplify that for me. Why are you allowed to multiply the top and bottom by x? Yeah, because you're multiplying by 1. So what does that turn into? x over what? x squared plus And stop. All done. There is nothing more you should do. Pretty cool, huh? All done. Yay. Your homework tonight is to finish the questions that you've been working on. All the questions are online in this in one packet. So there's five questions total. You've worked on three of them so far. So your job is to make sure you understand the what you've been working on and the next two. This two is easy. This two is easy.